Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. This is your host Sri Ayer, and today I have with me Professor M D Nalapat, and we are going to talk about India stock markets and why they are a vital cog in the Atmanirbharta wheel. And to understand the context and everything, let's invite our guest to uh, you know start with what he thinks and why he thinks this is important. Uh, Professor Nalapat, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel, sir. Thank you, thank you, Sri. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be on your channel, sir. The pleasure and honor is all mine. You, uh, you, I see you as one of my mentors who said that I had a uh, future in journalism, and I have uh, tried to follow the path that uh, you know you have been following, sir. And uh, all credit to you, Professor Nalapat. I have a certain view of India stock markets, and I would like. I mean, and and our viewers know my views. I'd like you. to tell us how you see the stock markets because there's a new gift exchange coming up in ahmedabad and uh, what you feel is needs to be happening so that the companies that want to make india atmanirbhar they can get their capital from the stock markets so please take it away sir yeah sri you know a country is frankly dependent on the rate of utilization of its brain power the the rate of adoption of its innovative minds and we have a country that is rich in innovative minds absolutely brimming uh, with that now the question is to ensure that you have uh, an ecosystem that nourishes uh, the such minds and that uh, puts down any effort to destroy these minds and let's be honest it can be in the form of uh, of competition it can be in the form of uh, just a, a dislike of anything new or whatever but so this is the point that that kind of an ecosystem is very important it's not that you know uh, the, the 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 problem with the banking system is that unless you already have money the banks are not going to give you Uh, more money, a uh, money. Of course, a lot of people uh, have assets that they have really uh, taken from the banks, but in you know in whatever way. But whatever it is, the problem is that if you go to a bank with a full mind and empty hands, so to speak, the bank will tell you, "Sorry, get lost." Uh, perhaps there are bankers who will take a chance. i know that in the past bankers took a chance an example is the syndicate bank uh, in manipur and the syndicate bank took a chance on a businessman who had been doing pretty badly in some of his past projects but who decided that he was going to succeed in his next project and the syndicate bank uh, chairman uh, said yes we are going to back this gentleman and this gentleman's name was dhirubhai ambani and we, we all know that with that syndicate bank loan what dhirubhai did and what uh, what became of his empire and today uh, i mean mukesh uh, has made that empire even bigger even larger so the point is to you know and it's like prospecting for gold you have different locations or oil you may you know let's say you got enough for three or four uh, uh, prospecting uh, locations and the fifth location that you got on your map is has got the oil well if you have somebody who's got confidence in you and who will go ahead and fund you for that fifth location then you benefit the country benefits the world benefits with more resources uh, being tapped uh, from the ground i mean i'm told for example that on spacex elon musk took a pretty major chance on its on success uh, for spacex and he would have been uh, in you know in in a lot of trouble if that uh, bet hadn't come true but he, he elon musk was his, was his own banker and he succeeded so the problem is that especially i mean you know given the after the nationalization of banks in 69 70 uh and even even otherwise frankly a lot of the very necessary investigations that have gone on 
into uh, uh, the way banks have, lend, have been lending money to people, uh, there is a certain loan shy culture uh, in the banks. You know, you have a gun shy culture. You get hurt by a gun and then you're terrified of guns. So you get into, you know, you see a colleague of yours going through hell uh, because he's accused of basically all kinds of motives, which he may, may not have had. He may have had, but he may not have had actually. I've seen some cases in which uh, individuals who, in my view, were perfectly innocent, were uh, wrongly identified as criminal, as their motives were uh, questioned, uh, and uh, they went into jail, or they had their careers and their lives wrecked. So, you know, bankers will therefore be careful. They'll be loan shy. So then what happens to Atman Nirbhar? Atman Nirbhar then become dependent on those who already have access to bank money or who have money of their own. Either you're Elon Musk or you're somebody who has accessed bank money and has therefore built up a reputation for building a, a, a vast empire. And if you don't have either of these things, but you simply have a good idea, and you have the capacity to carry that good idea out, assuming that uh, you know you get the funding, and if banks are not lending you that, where do you get that seed funding? A lot, some of it come, a lot of it comes from venture capital, and uh, I must say that over the last uh, two or three years, and I'd like to say in this matter, in matters financial, Modi 2.0 is miles ahead of what Modi 1.0 was, miles and miles ahead. And that's a great thing. So the, the reality is that what happens is that then you turn to the stock market. And that implies certain things. One is the stock markets are run in a professional manner and not rigged to favor some shares, uh, to favor some promoters, and to, if I may say so, uh, destroy others who may be their rivals. Now, you know, you have been writing ex extensively about a particular exchange in India that went under, uh, mainly because it challenged an exchange that subsequently has been found uh, beyond any reasonable doubt of having, you know, uh, of having uh, committed a whole lot of stuff. Now, of course, the problem is that efforts are now on to ensure that whoever takes the place of the disgraced officials will also come from a similar milieu. And they'll also have, although they'll be more lucky in the sense that they would not have attracted attention, for example, that they would have basically the same kind of mindset uh, that has been shown by this particular uh, exchange. Whereas what is needed is a completely fresh mind, completely outside that uh, the, that exchange system in India and having a clear record of integrity and competence. And these days with social media, these days with access to your mails, access to what you're doing. Over the last, you don't have to track over the last uh, you know, 20 years, track over the last three years or five years. You can easily do that. India has got the capability of doing that and find out, is the individual concerned, you know, uh, is he uh, in league with, let's say, if you're looking at a stock market, is he in league with a select group of brokers or our select group of brokers promoting this gentleman or this lady for some reason? And those select brokers are known to be individuals who, whichever government comes to power, they're on top. They are fine. You know, if you have... I mean, now you had Manmohan Singh in power, they are fine. You have the new government in power, they are fine. Tomorrow, if Sitaram Yachuri becomes the prime minister, a short while before that, they are going to take out, a, a, buy books of, on Marxism, and they're going to go around spreading the word that from the time of their childhood, they were actually closet Marxists. And now, thank God, a real Marxist is coming as prime minister of India, of course. Uh, it's not going to be great for India, but they're not going to worry about that because the country means nothing to them. It's only themselves, themselves and themselves. And very likely, 
Mr. Yechuri will believe that at least 20-25% of them are look, he's looking at comrades who have finally been, you know, acknowledged themselves and come, uh, you know, into the light of day. Whereas formerly their deep conviction in Karl Marx was hidden. So the point is, you need a clean media. And unfortunately, the media can be used not only to promote people, it can also be used to destroy enemies of people that you are secretly promoting. And, you know, if you have that kind of a situation, you get people who are destroyed, who should not be destroyed, who should be allowed to grow, who should be allowed to prosper, who could do great work. But because they're coming the way of some vested interest, the, the media is, I hope they're misled, and I hope it's nothing else, because I believe in the media profession, I believe in journalists, they can be misled, and I, I hope relatively few of them are influenced in other ways. But the fact is that this should not be happening. And I'm again telling you, the good news is, I think Modi 2.0, so far as technical matters are concerned, I think they have a fairly, fairly clear read on a lot of situations. And I have absolute confidence that the Prime Minister and his trusted lieutenants, including the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman, are working to ensure that the system is cleansed. And three, it's a question of not changing, you know, one person who has done dodgy things in one market with a, with a, into another market where dodgy things took place. Because once you're used to doing dodgy things, you don't change. You may be lucky in that people don't discover it. But essentially, if you look at the track record and see what's happening, see the companies that have done well, done badly, see the investors who have benefited. And if retail investors have benefited, if people in the middle class have benefited, if mutual funds have benefited, then there's something good. But if, as unfortunately the case, in too many exchanges in the country, mutual funds have been taken for a ride, the retail investors have been cheated, really cheated, and a handful of speculators have made tremendous profits, well then, you have a, there's a problem and you should not be considered. So I'd like to say, I have great confidence under Modi 2.0 that this kind of a 360 degree and X-ray vision will be carried out. For example, in your, uh, your favorite stock market, NSE, where a lot of what you said in the past has now come out. And a lot of what you're saying today will, I'm sure, come out tomorrow. I mean, including some individuals who so far are safe, but according to you should not be safe. I'm sure that given the prime minister's desire for a clean government, why? Because without a clean government, he cannot succeed in Atmanirbhar Bharat. He cannot succeed in the rate of growth of double digit, which is needed to keep India stable. Why are you seeing so much violence? Of course, you have the sino Wahhabi lobby actively promoting it. But the problem is that because you have large scale underemployment, unemployment, and, the, and a fall of income because of COVID, etc., there is very, very dry straw, dry tinder, which any mischief monger can put a spark to. And that the prime minister is well aware of. So I'm very confident that this cleanup that you're now seeing at high speed in NSE is going to go through other exchanges as well. And clean people are going to come so that the mistakes of the past, where clean people are basically destroyed on behalf of people who have been doing all kinds of horrible things, and India is in trouble as a consequence, that will end. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Nalapat and uh, viewers. I have a couple of quick announcements. First of all, please like this video. We need to be having 10 times the traffic on uh, your eyeballs on this video because Professor Nalapat, in my opinion, said a lot of things without mentioning names. But if you have been a keen follower of P Gurus and Sunday Guardian, you'll know exactly who he is mentioning, who is headed for what fate. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing is at 9.30 p.m. IST, I'm going to give you an update on the Karthik Gopinath case, uh, his uh, 
FIR, what is happening on that. So please do tune in for that. And now the question to Professor Nalapar. Professor Nalapar, see, India um, is trying to come up with a new exchange called the Gift Exchange in Ahmedabad. So you have the BSC, Bombay Stock Exchange. It's got its own share of controversies. You have the NSE. I mean, the regional exchanges have fallen by the wayside. That is, you know, we can't do much about it. But the gift exchange is a new exchange. See, the way NSE grabbed market share from BSC was by saying that they had the latest in technology. But the brokers had no choice when you have um, a car versus a horse. At some point, the horse is going to fall away. And, and they all jump ship to NSC. Now, the same set of brokers would be required to, again, start using the gift exchange. Do you think, do you think, in your opinion, this government is going to sift the grain from the chaff of the broker industry? We know some of them are bent. Some of them are very, very uh, violently illegal, vehemently illegal, I should say. Do you think this government is also looking at making sure that when you start a new exchange, that it has clean brokers as part of it? Well, Sri, I want to ask you, have you bought a horse to ride around uh, you know, where you're living? I certainly, frankly, I don't even know if I could afford a horse, but I, I, I mean, uh, but I, I, would, I, 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 don't, uh, I, I don't think there are too many people uh, who, are, who are buying horses to go around it. And if you have people running an exchange who don't transit from horses to cars, quite frankly, there are problems in 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 the in the ability of those people to 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 make changes. Whether it's intentional, whether it's not, I don't know. But frankly, there is no excuse. If in the age of the automobile you are still using horses, there's no excuse for you, frankly. So if you're failing because of that to another exchange. And then the question is, is this particular car fixed? And then you have to look, frankly, and the question of what brokers. A broker has got to be an honest broker. Never use the word broker. Always add the word honest broker to broker because a broker is not a broker unless he or she is an honest broker. Unfortunately, there are individuals and they made a lot of money for themselves. They made a lot of money for their clients, essentially by, you know, rigging the price of stock and then selling out and then, for example, forcing down the price of stock through various means, including in one case, uh, a particular budget announcement that was removed soon after something happened. And you, all, you know what I'm talking about. It's been written about uh, in, and has been talked about in P-Gurus as well. So, frankly, I think we need honest brokers in the system. And that means we need a fresh crop of people. We need, you know, today, in, in the 90s, we had the Infocis, we had the Wipros in the 80s, actually. And they came up and they became what they are now. There are putative Wipros and Infocis and all that. And there are putative honest brokers there. What GIFT needs to do is to be a completely transparent and neutral platform so that brokers there are forced to be honest. If, let us say, you are, you know, 24-7, you are under video and audio surveillance, and in fact, a lot of people are, frankly, through their smartphones, even though they don't realize it, and in, in some ways, that's not good. In other ways, if it's being... If that's used properly, it's great. So I think GIFT has got a remarkable uh, a chance of doing very well for, uh, on the condition that it ensures that the people who are in looking after it are people who have come fresh into that particular job, who in a sense learn on the job, so to speak, for a year or two. You're going to have some stumbles, but essentially that is... a important because you can't just transfer a bunch of people who basically did a lot of speculative trading and who ruined so many people in the middle class so many people who invested in mutual funds through manipulation it's easy to find out where this manipulation took place 
because these days bank accounts wherever you go they are transparent and a, 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 every country except china will help india if supposing you got your bank balances in china well you there's a problem that you that you, that you know that you have but then you're not willing to have the government look into it and such people should immediately be identified and removed from any position that they have if there's anything that they or their family members have that kind of an outlet but the point is very simple sri gift can be a real gift to india if it becomes a a a, 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 a neutral platform where there are only honest brokers and transparency can ensure that and in fresh blood can ensure that and a record of integrity and you pay them very well if you are an office bearer if you are a manager pay well you know uh, lee kuan yew uh, said very correctly that what happened in india and and you know I, all i did was i followed what india was doing and did the opposite and one thing that <laughs> india did after independence it cut the salaries of civil servants and multiplied their responsibilities so you cut salary and multiply responsibility it's an impossible cocktail it just doesn't work so pay them well very very well singapore did that and singapore was enabled to do that in india a lot of salaries are such that you can't get by uh, uh, you you really can't get by you can't maintain a family you can't even maintain yourself on your salary and then willingly other things get done Uh, some initially for survival, and then because uh, you get a taste for luxury and various other things. So the system gift has got to be ensuring. Go by the Singapore example: high pay packets, clear uh, eye on integrity, competence, and transparency, and a neutral platform where only honest brokers are safe, and the just those who are brokers. and the word broker has a very unpleasant connotation as you know it means fixer unpleasant connotation it's a very noble profession stock broking it ought to be for and there are many honest brokers in the country but they may not be doing the kind of business that some others do but it's a very noble profession and gift would be a gift to the whole of india if that kind of broker were to be encouraged which i'm sure will happen why because a clean stock market is essential to the economic growth of india why because it's essential to ensure that people who are rich in ideas in innovation in talent are not disadvantaged because they haven't got deep pockets that lack has to be made up by the system if it's partly by banks but banks will normally doesn't do not lend you unless you already have money and how do you find that kind of seed money you find it in the stock market or what happens unfortunately you get venture capitalists who are china linked or who have got all kinds of other links and they give you seed money they catch your your intellectual property and of course they give it away you understand that is the problem and that is the whole issue if gift ensures that there is a change from past practices a chain that i am seeing happen during modi 2.0 i think that is very very important especially the upa period frankly you have written extensively about it and a particular finance minister he ensured that this kind of activity took place and he did tremendous long term damage to india which finally is being rectified and in my view will be almost entirely rectified by 2029 Well, uh, yours. What Professor Nalapat was alluding to is NSE, its shenanigans, and the fact that you need to have honest brokers coming into play uh, at gift exchange, and that will pay for a clean system at gift exchange. We wish them all the best, and I do be I do believe that Prime Minister Modi is uh, very very committed to cleaning up what is wrong with the NSE because you can't allow some of this to you know come over to the new exchange because then it will also become the same. and i have been writing and i've been also producing videos in my opinion there are five people who made nsc the body that it is now 
I've already identified one person. That person's video came two days ago. If you want to go back and look at it, the person's name is Ajay Shah. You can take a look at that. There are four more people. I will we'll be doing videos on specifically how they colluded to make sure that uh, uh, market was uh, completely gained by uh, these people to make sure that one exchange profited and through that they also profited. And, and this is a, a little complicated case, but we are going to try and unravel as much as possible to show you what is the uh, the grains there and what is the chaff there. That That's an uh, ongoing series. And, and Professor Nalapat, in conclusion, I, I hear you loud and clear, sir, that gift is supposed to be a clean slate that everybody who is uh, there will be somebody with a spotless record. However, I have some misgivings, Professor Nalapat. I also know one of these four, remaining four, is also playing a certain role as an advisor in the gift city. And uh, don't you think that uh, uh, people who are advising Prime Minister Modi should have done the work to make sure that none of the bad stink from NSE comes over to the gift exchange? Well, Sri, it's, uh, it's not just NSE. It is, uh, it is uh, you know, uh, frankly, the way uh, uh, some individuals have used uh, the stock exchanges, uh, frankly, for personal benefit at the expense of the country. You yes. per personal benefit is fine, but you can't do it at the expense of the public and you can't do it in matters that are unethical and illegal. And this is what has happened. Now, uh, the, I mean, the individual that you mentioned, the point is 99% of uh, these items do not come to the level of attention of the Prime Minister. 95% do not come to the level of attention of the Finance Minister. They, you know, they trust people below that. And even at the level just immediately below them, you will find that 75% uh, or that does not come to the attention of the top senior uh, civil servants. So ultimately what happens is it will be at some middle level or so that this particular uh, uh, wrong uh, decision gets uh, infiltrated and it just goes up the system because it frankly, uh, it does not reach the top. And the second point is, unfortunately, when you have an information uh, gathering system that relies very heavily on just officials who are there uh, in a particular location and if some of the officials are compromised, then what happens is the information becomes tainted. And I think, frankly, one of the greatest problems that any country faces is tainted information. Tainted information is a danger to national security. But as I said, increasingly I find in Modi 2.0, uh, this kind of tainted information is being recognized for what it is. It's very easy to put a fake dossier on somebody. You can paint a uh, a rascal as as an outstanding uh, you know, patriotic individual. You can you can paint a patriot as a rascal, and unfortunately, as as the, that file goes up the ladder, there's less and less verification and check uh, as to the veracity of these claims. So a lot of good people get excluded, a lot of awful people get included, and here, fortunately, Sri. The people who should not be included are much smaller in number, very much smaller than the UPA period, smaller than under the initial years of the Prime Minister. And may I say, it's a complex business running this country. It's a complex business administering this governance system. And it takes a little bit of time. And that is why I am heartened to see the enormous progress that is being made by the Prime Minister in his mission of cleansing the system. And that's why I said, by 2029, that mission will be mission accomplished. Thank you very much, Professor Nalapat. And you've said a lot of truths about uh, the fact that, uh, you know, India needs to have a very robust and transparent stock exchange. And one of the things, in my opinion, that India is perhaps missing out is the exodus of companies from China. And the beneficiaries of that are three countries, sir, Vietnam for which they could just drive across the border and establish, put, pull out stakes from China, go and establish it in Vietnam and be running one country. Second country was Mexico. Mexico has uh, Mexico, Mexico. 
uh, they have been a big beneficiary of the third one is united states itself you will see in the next six months how much industry is going to come back into united states and and what is going to be remaining and china is going to be a hollow shell this is just my prediction i could be wrong you don't take my word for it but this is this has been now observed the exodus is very very strong people are coming back into these three countries unfortunately india should have been on that list and it is my uh, you know somewhere somebody somebody doesn't want india to progress this is this is i'm not pointing fingers definitely not at prime minister modi or his government they are full of good intentions but i can see that many people don't want this country to progress in the speed at which it should be progressing thank you very much professor nalapat and we will watch this space and we'll be happy to announce you any good things that might come out of it by the way personally 99 percent of me says that that particular himalayan yogi is the individual we talked about i'm not going to ask you your percentage on who that himalayan yogi is my my personal belief is that this is the himalayan yogi that was talked about a lot anyway Thank you very much, Professor Nalapat. Go ahead, sir. You wanted to say something? No, I just want to say, Sri, that yes, I am confident that this kind of uh, transformation is taking place. And two, in my view, the Himalayan yogi is not uh, is not an official; is a much higher individual who controls a web of officials. That's all I'm going to say. That is the real Himalayan yogi, and uh, and he has got a bunch of of you know junior yogis under him. And he operates through those junior yogis. Amazing that you can do all this in plain sight and still not get caught. I don't know how that that happens, but India is a place. You go to Inter India International Center for lunch. You can know exactly what is happening, who's meeting whom, what is being done, what is being fixed. Just go to walk through the whole restaurant in the IIC Annex restaurant, which is supposed to be better than the original one. Anyway, this is just for jest. Thank you very much, Professor Nalapat. And as always, a pleasure having you on our channel, sir. Viewers, do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And also click on the bell button for notification. And if you like this thing, and if you would like to show your appreciation for this program, you can donate whatever you feel like using the super thanks button. Thank you once again. Namaskar. Namaskar.